Hello, my name's Cindy Barber and I'm in charge of the Quality of Education at Ormiston Park Academy. So I'm going to share with you a presentation that's called Joining the Dots. And this is to make sure that the education of all students within the school is one that is well sequenced, balanced and helps students to remember information as well as skills. So we start off with the sequencing and making sure that all departments have their curriculum maps in place. Each map is split into half terms and then by year. Each half term for each department, each class, there is a schema produced that we have called a knowledge schema. We then use this information, which I'll go into in more depth later on, to fill in our assessment tracker, which is filled in fortnightly at the maximum, but most teachers are filling it in every single lesson so that they keep a constant eye on where their students are and what they need to do to achieve their goals. Throughout our lessons, we obviously include assessment for learning with feedback in aid of ensuring that information goes from short-term and working memory into students' long-term memory. We also try to make sure that lessons, as far as possible, are individualised for students, so that students that are high prioritainers, students with SEND needs, students with English as a foreign language, students that have got PP or low reading ages or looked after students all have these areas taken into consideration when planning to make sure that the curriculum is as accessible as possible for every single student within the school. One way we do this is to make sure that routines are in place. The start of every lesson should be exactly the same and we also make sure that retrieval is a very important part of every lesson. Each lesson starts with a do now, which draws on prior learning to help it go into long-term memory, but information that would be vital for that lesson as well. We also make sure that routines and retrieval are part of homework and assessment for learning. And lastly, we make, lastly, we make sure that all lessons and teachers are as supportive as possible and that we help build up our students, providing them not only with the information they need to succeed in lessons, but information that they need to succeed in life, how to build up relationships with people, how to behave in a certain way, how to deal with so social situations, how to cope emotionally, and giving them careers advice and guidance so that when they leave school, they have a good idea of where they want to go and what they need to do to achieve that. So the first thing that we really concentrate on is making sure that sequencing is done in all subjects in all years throughout the academy. So each subject has its own curriculum map and at the top of the curriculum map for both Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, that subject should show their intent, what they want students to learn, not just with regards to curriculum content, but with regards to skills, with regards to cultural capital, and with regards to how they're going to use that information in their future careers. We then have implementation and how each subject is going to make sure that their intent is implemented throughout their curriculum. And lastly, each subject for Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 outlines the impact that they hope to achieve for each student that studies the course. Below the intent implementation and impact, each half term, the core content and skills are highlighted. These are done in core bullet points so that each student should know and each teacher should know what should be achieved by the end of each half term. This allows us to show sequencing and also means that curriculum leaders are asked to make sure that new information is building on prior knowledge and that every time new information is provided to students, students have also already been given the contextual skills that they need, the contextual knowledge that they need, any key vocabulary that they need, so that when they're learning new information, it's building on something which is already there. So they're creating schemas as they go along. Now that can either be through homeworks, through do nows, through extended reading, 
However they do it for each of their subjects, we make sure that students feel confident when they go into lessons that new information is being introduced in a small, chunking way that allows them to build and, and draw comparisons with other areas that they have already learned. The curriculum map also shows assessments and endpoints, what students need to have achieved at what points in the curriculum so that they can assess constantly along with the teacher where they are in relation to what they need to know. It also shows the structure of teaching and it aims to show each student what they're going to be doing on their five year journey so that at the start of year seven to the end of year 11 is a clear mapping of skills, of progression, of content to enable them to achieve success. And also it just shows that each subject are fully achieving the teaching of the national curriculum, showing breadth and ambition throughout the student's journey at school. Now each half term, students are provided with a knowledge schema and these are taken from the key points of the curriculum map. Now, these knowledge schemas have been absolutely crucial in our journey through school. They show the intended half-termly endpoints for both core knowledge, which is on the right of the curriculum map, as well as the concepts and skills which are underneath. This means that students from the very start of the half-term are aware of the key content that they are going to learn so that they can use that in advance, their parents know that, and the teacher has a clear idea and aim of where they need to be. It's done in very clear bullet points so that students and teachers can assess their current understanding for each section and know which areas are secure and which areas need to be developed. We've tried to make this as far as possible, as prescriptive as possible. So for example, in our English one, and sorry, in our history one, um, we may have said, give three reasons why um, African-Americans felt intimidated by the actions of the KKK. Or give three examples of the causes of the Greensboro sittings. And that way, students can see whether or not they have managed to achieve the three clear examples or the three key events or the three consequences that they will need to know to be able to answer a question on that. This also shows how the knowledge and skills are sequenced and lead to progression because the key content should build on each other as you go through and likewise on the left hand side of the knowledge schema is the bullet points for retrieval practice. Now often the retrieval practice will be based on bringing up content that has been taught in prior terms or prior years um, whether it's about the same theme or about the same skills that will help the students with their new content. So again, showing sequencing and how information is built on prior knowledge and how it leads to progression. Other areas that might be included in the retrieval practice are areas from prior assessments where it's been noted by the teacher that there's still gaps in student learning and they're areas that might need to be then revisited during that half term to make sure that any gaps are filled in and any misconceptions are changed so that students don't continue with the same misconceptions and instead have the right information. So it shows how we're trying to make sure that gaps are filled, misconceptions are addressed, prior learning is also then um, embedded and this is done using do nows at the start of each lesson as well as homeworks and assessments. So retrieval practice is a constant feature of the knowledge schemas and throughout the half term students know that they should be going through all of the information on the retrieval practice and all of the information on the core knowledge to be learned that half term. And in order to assess that students have understood that the assessments that they are then given at the end of the core content contains 50% of the core content and 50% of the prior knowledge. And teachers can then make sure that students are knowing more and remembering more and being able to use that in their answers. Again, that then allows at the end of that assessment to look at any gaps that can still be seen. So then following half term, 
you will have the new core knowledge for that particular half term and the retrieval practice will be made up of any misconceptions that are still there, any gaps from the assessment and any knowledge that they have again learned prior to the half term that will fit in with the new core knowledge. This is a massive, massively important piece of work for us because the students themselves are constantly able to assess they have a copy of this in the back of their books and they tick off when they feel secure about something. The teacher then, as we're going through with the do nows, the homeworks, the assessments in class, will update the tracker that we're going to look at next to make sure that the teacher, the curriculum leaders, the head of year and the tutors can see how each student is getting on throughout their learning journeys, not just in one subject, not just in one department, but across all of their subjects. So this really helps to ensure consistency across the departments with curriculum leaders being able to keep an eye on what classes are doing well, what students need intervention and address those interventions early from the start of year seven rather than wait until GCSE points. It also means that students are focusing on learning content and skills and being able to use them in assessment situations. And of course, because parents are made aware of this as well, parents can work with the school to help the students achieve their goals. So here you can see a copy of the live progress tracker and this is taken from the year 10 history tracker. Now this takes the key points directly from the knowledge schema. So if you can see on the darker areas there, it gives you the key things that the students will know from that half term. So, can you explain two features of English society in 1509? Can you explain the success and failure of the Treaty of London, the field of the cloth of gold, the Battle of Spurs and Battle of Flodden, for, etc., for, for example? At the start of lessons, a couple of weeks later after they've been taught it, so that they've had time to have that gap, then a do now or a homework or a, a small mini assessment, an exam question will be given. And then that will be peer or self-marked with the teacher just quality assuring, often with the use of a visualizer. And then students will be able to tell whether or not they have remained, uh, retained all of the information, in which case they will say that they are green. If they've got some of the information but can't remember all of it, then they will be um, amber, which means that they are developing. The green means secure. If, however, they can't remember any of the information, then they will get a red, which means emerging. This then allows the students to assess where they are. The teacher can fill in the tracker up to date. Again, we don't do it on the day that they've learnt the information because that's not an accurate representation of what they remember in the longer term. This then means that we use this information to feed in for our subsequent curriculum planning, further do nows. So information on a do now where it says that a lot of students remember the key points, as you can see there with regards to Brown versus Board of Education, they're all green. That means that we won't need to address that in a do now for a short amount of time. However, there was some key gaps and many students weren't secure in their knowledge of the pilgrimage of grace. So as we did the feedback in that um, and the students added information to the green pen, then I would, as a teacher, note that in a couple of weeks' time, I'd do another Do Now activity with the students to see whether they'd retained that second lot of information and whether I could turn some of those developings into secures. Now, this is really crucial, again, because this is shared with parents. So parents can see how their students are getting along in each subject and across the board, whether they're having more problems with some subjects than others. Um, again, it allows the tutors to keep an eye on the students, senior leadership and curriculum leaders, and some intervention can be put in place really, really quickly. It also means that teachers are much more able to accurately predict student outcomes and plan to fill in the gaps so that it's not relying on one assessment at the end of four or five months where a student might not be feeling 100%, the whole of the process means that before they get to their assessment, there is constant small retrieval points throughout where any misconceptions are addressed. So by the time they come to their assessment, the teacher and the student are pretty secure in the knowledge 
that they know roughly where that student is and have had time between the initial teaching and the assessment to ensure that any gaps are filled. This also allows quality assurance of teaching and learning of content and skills to be adjusted and embedded within departments, look at areas of good practice for teachers where students in particular classes seem to be really secure in their knowledge, look to see what they're doing and help another teacher, for example, where maybe students are developing or still embedding that information. It's also really crucial because it does allow the school, tutors, teachers, curriculum leaders to assess how different groups are doing in those subjects. How are SEND students doing? Are they still mostly on emerging? If they are, then the lessons need to be changed and adapted so that those students are able to access the information better. Are PPG students able to access that information? Is there uh, too many PPG students that are on red as opposed to non-PPG students on green? Are the higher attainers, high prior attainers, are they managing to find themselves securing a lot of the information or are they finding that they're still developing? If so, what is it that means that those students that were prior higher attainers are now not accessing the information? Again, this allows for teaching and learning to be adjusted so that all students should be able to access the key information. As it's a working document, filled in after completing do now activities, homeworks, assessment, it should be as far as possible an up-to-date assessment of where each student is at that time. And that is why it's really important to revisit information in do nows two or three months later on the retrieval side of the schema. Because in that time, students may well have forgotten some of the information, so it needs to constantly be updated, go back to prior information, assess whether they still know that, or do they need extra time to make sure that it's embedded into their long-term memory? Um, and it allows targeted feedback to classes. It allows individual homeworks to be set. It allows individual assessment and feedback. It helps to plan for revision so that a revision is targeted at the right students and to the right content. Obviously, this is all about assessment. You know, there is the assessment for learning and this enables teachers to use information about students' knowledge, understanding and skills to inform that their teaching. This is what the knowledge schema is, what the tracker is all about. It allows teachers as a result to provide the feedback to the students about their learning and how to improve so that this is a constant process. It helps teachers to assess the curriculum. Are the students where they need to be? Have they learnt the information they need to learn? Do they know the skills they need to know to be able to answer questions properly? Have they got the right level of knowledge to be able to answer a question in depth with the right number of points? And have they got the skills necessary to make sure that their information addresses the question? Assessment should be constantly regular the constant assessment for learning, the do nows every single lesson, the homework addressing assessment retrieval practice, evaluating constantly the knowledge and the skills on the tracker. This means that if this is done properly and in a way that is meaningful by teachers where all teachers share their own knowledge and understanding of what they're doing in the lesson, it should be able to provide meaningful data for teachers to check understanding misconceptions and gaps and provide clear next steps for pupils to inform the wider curriculum pl planning. Now, obviously assessment should be prioritised, but it should only still, as Ofsted say, be used a couple of times a year for data collection. And that is why the use of the curriculum map, the schemas and the tracker are really important because in between that data collection, that is what informs us as teachers what we need to do to help the student improve so that they effectively fulfil the aims of the curriculum. Now, this is something that's really personal to me. I've really touched on it before, but lessons really do need to be individualised. As you can see there, there's a lovely picture there of my two children. The, the tallest, the eldest is Michael and the youngest is Daniel. Now, they're both great 
great children, both really good, but they themselves have individual needs. And I think since being a mum to them, it's made me realise just how important and how precise these needs can be and the impact of having a good teacher that recognises their needs on their learning. So any student with any particular need, whether it's a SENS, PP, looked after, should have a class profile with their specific learning information, including, mm, crucially, their reading age. Because if they've got a low reading age and we are giving them complex text, they are automatically not going to be able to access the learning and they're going to switch off, which is another barrier to learning. So making sure that lessons are individualised allows us as teachers to deliver a high quality curriculum for all. And again, this is a way of making sure this is done by checking the tracker and making sure that all students, including SENS and PP students, are able to access the work. Subjects and lessons should constantly be trying to adapt to people's needs. We know that change um, is difficult, but it is important that we make sure that all students are able to have the information. This is why routines are important. Having routines in place means that it takes away from the working memory. It gives extra space in the working memory for those students that find that they can only deal with a certain amount of information. Once a routine is established, the students will naturally do that and it gives them more space. You know, there are lots of students, for example, my eldest, Michael, change is difficult. If you give him a task and you say you're going to give him 10 minutes and then you stop after five minutes and he hasn't completed, he finds that difficult because you've changed the goalposts. So simple things in a lesson like saying five minutes and then having that countdown on the board so students can see where they are could make a crucial difference for a lot of students. A lot of students will suffer from sensory overload. So making sure that they're not near lots of students that will distract them, putting them away from the door where students might come in or out or people might be going across the door through the corridor and take their mind off of it, making sure that they're not next to a window where people are running past outside in the playground coming to and from PE. You know, it's about for some students, they need to know what's coming next. So at the start of the lesson, introducing what you're going to do, what the activities are, what your objectives are, your knowledge objectives and your skills objectives and how you're going to meet them. So a student is mentally prepared for the activities that are going to come next. It might be that a student needs a certain colour paper or a certain colour overlay. It might mean that a student needs to have a word map next to them because they find the spellings of some words difficult or a glossary of key terms because they can't remember some of the key concepts or the terms and they can use that next to them. It's really important that we know our students and that we do tailor the content to this. If a student suffers from dyslexia, then think about how you're going to ensure that they can access the information. Are you going to read it to them as a class and have students follow along? Are you going to use any computer programs in place which can read it for the student? So when planning, we should also account for these needs as well as for things like gaps in learning as a result of the pandemic. Students might not have accessed as much of the key stage two curriculum or the start of the key stage three curriculum as they need to. So rather than assuming that they've got some contextual knowledge, spend some time going over it to make sure that they do know about it. If you're teaching Charles Dickens and you're talking about Victorian England, don't just assume that they know what it was like, have some conversations, play some clips, etc. So that the students are able to fit in the storyline with that context. It's also really important that we do this because not all students have knowledge of things outside of their area. There's many students in disadvantaged places where they lack cultural capital. So it's about making sure that students get that sense of, of what's going on. And also, as well as what's on the curriculum, it's really important for, students, for schools to offer extracurricular activities, enrichment activities, allow students to do things like visit a museum, see proper pieces of artwork, 
go to visit a castle and actually be able to envisage what it's like to have lived at that time, which will have a massive impact on their learning. Curriculums, as we should all know, should provide a high academic, vocational and technical ambition for all pupils. Um, and not reducing that curriculum because a student has SEND needs. My youngest son, Daniel, didn't read till he was, or he didn't actually talk till he was four and he went to a special nursery and we had to spend a lot of time working with him with speech therapy etc at the end of his year two report when he was seven he was above average for his maths despite not being able to talk for more than three years and he was in line with his english and his reading is above average and that's because the school that he went to uh, the child minder that he had at that time as well, as well as the impact of myself working with him tirelessly, meant that we didn't just cut him off at the age of four when he wasn't talking very much and assume that because he'd been diagnosed with SEND needs that he wouldn't achieve very well, because now he's reading all sorts of books with a great vocabulary and he's in top set for maths and he's achieving excellently because he's been treated as an individual and because there's been ambition and strategies put in place to help him with his speech and language and understanding which have been crucial so we should never ever ever cut any student off but just realize what we need to put in place with their parents to help them so we should never allow disadvantaged and send students to have less access to the curriculum and as i've said lessons should include routines they crucially should include retrieval. But other key areas, as Rose and Shine, and as all good academics and teachers know, it's all about scaffolding and gradually taking away those scaffolds. Even the cleverest students need to have things scaffolded during their lessons when they're first learning something to be given them models creating schemas for them it's absolutely crucial before you start a topic you create a schema for a student so that when they're then learning it again they're hooking that new knowledge that you're teaching them in class to a schema so it might be giving them an article to read or a chapter to read or some youtube clips to look at before teaching it in class then when they're in class and they've done that they make links, they make comparisons, they join the information together with the contextual knowledge you've given them and then you're addressing it later, two weeks later in a do now, three or four weeks later in a homework and you're helping that information be completely embedded in that student, especially if each of the activities are done slightly differently. As Graham Nuttall says in his Hidden Lives of Learners, it's really important that for long-term memory retrieval, a student needs to have each piece of work, um, information addressed at least three times before they fully understand it. And even then, it might be that they've uh, you know, got a misconception that needs to be addressed. Um, and again, it's really important at the start of each lesson, you make it clear what you want that student to learn. Do they need to learn three key causes of something? Do they need to know how to work out um, an angle um, for the opposite side you know do they need to know the impact of a volcano on a local village be very clear so that at the end of a lesson it's much easier to judge if that student has understood the information because they've got a clear understanding of what they need to be able to achieve at the end as I've said retrieval practice is absolutely crucial we have do nows focusing on the retrieval at the start of every lesson to help long term memory. It's based on the key content from the schemas, the core content studied and making sure that students, when they go into an assessment, they feel really comfortable with the content that they have studied and they are not worried. Their mind doesn't go blank. It comes naturally to them. It's basically crucial for sufficient repetition of key content included in all lessons homeworks to boost the student understanding and confidence and therefore it allows key concepts to be embedded into the long-term memory 
it should be prioritised. We shouldn't be teaching students for six months without any retrieval and then expecting them to cram for two weeks at the end before an assessment because they won't remember it all. It needs to be interleaved, sequenced well, embedded into the lesson. You need to link it to prior knowledge, link it to current learning to make sure that students are consistently knowing more, doing more and remembering more. As Ofsted say, and as everyone says really, learning is defined as an alteration in long-term memory. If nothing has altered in the long-term memory, then nothing has been learned. Routines are crucial, and as well as routines in the class, it's really important also to have routines for homework. This helps, routines help to create a conducive learning environment. When walking into class, Calm atmosphere helps students get straight on with their do now. They get in, they know what they're doing, they achieve that do now in the first five minutes. They then report back what they've got. Many SEND students and most people respond best to routine. It lessens anxiety and therefore breaks down the barriers when you enter the classroom. A homework timetable is crucial. It enables all students to know what homework they're getting from what subject, what night, and they can then plan what they're going to do that night. And they can fit it around any fixtures that they have for sports or any programs that they like to watch or any times they go out to see their friends because they know that the same time every week they're going to get their science homework or they're going to get their history homework. And at our school, we've tried to keep it to three key things. So students are either set homework which will help them to create a schema for their future learning to help them feel confident this is particularly important Daniel Sobel says with regards to barriers and that lots of boys lots of students that don't want to learn it's because when they go into the classroom they feel dumb they don't feel like they know anything compared to their um, peers in the classroom who already have knowledge so by helping to create a schema before you start learning it means that that student also feels they need they know something about it as well at the start of the lesson which gives them a bit more confidence and immediately starts to break down the barriers to learning as opposed to building them up we then make sure that we address any misconceptions so through questioning activities etc where students have misremembered something taken the wrong point not quite understood Homework is set to make sure that those misconceptions are addressed and that they do not go and embed themselves into the long term memory so that when they're doing an assessment, they're recalling the misconception rather than the correct information. And again, the third part of homework is the, the, the retrieval practice, making sure that students, even if it's from multiple choice questions, a short exam question, um, creating a mind map, etc., are using information prior information to help embed it into the long-term memory so at Ormiston Park Academy we're we're there we've had it embedded uh, in the summer term we're now continuing with that how have we done this well we've had CPD throughout the year constantly highlighting do now's cognitive memory the creation of the schemas how to do this making sure that it's constant not just delivering one and then allowing a teacher to forget it it's a bit like exactly the same as routines and retrieval keep revisiting it so that it becomes embedded in the long-term memory of the teachers resources have been regularly emailed out to teachers examples of do nows um, different activities that have worked with different classes um, in twilight sessions do nows have been mentioned Lots of drop-ins at the start of lessons, providing feedback to teachers on do nows, what's going well, how it could be tweaked, sharing good practice. There's been untold amounts of excellent practice with do nows. I go in and see that in a lesson and I'll share that via emails to all staff taking pictures of the do now. Teachers, if they've come up with a really good do now, will email it to me and again I will share that with other members of staff. Um, Questioning students about do nows in lessons, making sure that students understand that it's retrie retrieval. They all have that. They all know it's all about making sure their memory is improved. And without any doubt, 
students are saying that it is having an impact on what they can remember in lessons and that they are finding things in subjects easier. The amount of information is easier to remember because it's being done in lessons. Also highlighting the best do nows in a fortnightly teaching and learning newsletter with pictures of these and providing teachers with student feedback on the usefulness of do nows because teachers thrive on knowing that what they're doing is having an impact on that student's learning. So when a student says to me that they've enjoyed a do now or that a teacher in a particular subject's doing really good do nows or that their memory's improved because of it, I make sure I personally go to visit that teacher and explain to them um, the impact of that do now and praise them for it. Um, with regards to schemas, it was all about the research. It was about Ofsted requirement. It's about sequencing. It's about memory recall. But it's about making sure that it's the simplest form of, and the simplest way of making sure that the everyone, the teacher, the curriculum leader, the student, the parent, understands exactly what has got to be learned. Met with teachers, met with curriculum leaders, had feedbacks with them, gave them advice on how to adapt their schema so that it's easy for them to understand whether a student has met that target. And again, it, it's been a constant, it's, it's a work in progress. And actually now the schemas for this half term have been virtually perfect by staff because there's been those that process before of adapting and tweaking to make sure and as teachers are using the schemas and the tracker they're working out what needs to be changed then and what needs to be changed for next time and it's about making sure again that it's been included in twilight cpds again emailing good practice and the feedback from the students there's also been a lot of feedback from external people coming through saying what a positive impact that this is having on the students and how the students are really understanding what they need to know and where they need to get to as a result of them. And the assessment tracker, again, it's all about research and the best practice. It's about tying it together. It's about linking the do nows. It's about linking the schema. It's putting it all into the assessment tracker, making sure it links to the curriculum maps. And so that everyone can see how it's all joined together. Again, CPD, meetings with teachers, going through, checking that teachers know how to use it. Very simple. It's just green, amber, red. Um, and teachers, I think, have seen a massive benefit. We've also made sure that as a result of this, we've reduced the amount of marking that teachers are required to do. So for key stage three... Um, except for the assessment, most of the marking now is done by a student, um, peer and self-marking, lots of teacher feedback, and again with Key Stage 4, intermittent teacher marking, but again lots of it peer and self-feedback. The use of the visualiser, we've provided teachers with a visualiser that they can use at the front of the classroom. And so teachers see the benefit because actually that time is now not being used on marking 40 essays, 50 essays, 60 essays that are the same. It's now being spent on the students and the teachers working out where they are and how they need to do to improve. 